Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Expected value, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation problem too. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side. We're in the practice problems tab. And then down in the 1313 expected value, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation prob two. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader tool. Our presentation's up top, mirrored down here in the text area. The text area having the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top, going through the calculations on down below. In a prior presentation, we took a look at the statistical tools for basically analyzing a set of data that we'll be using as we do our projections into the future. This is the second of a similar problem, so we'll do it a bit faster here. We have our advertising campaign. Note that this is one of many different types of scenarios you might be using in order to group your information or group your ideas about what might happen in the future into into a thought process so you can get some results and move forward when you're looking at like an advertising campaign then you might be thinking about the advertising campaign of course having an impact on the unit sales that you're going to have which you need to calculate so that you can then determine how much inventory you need and possibly how much production you need to make if you're doing a production type of situation so one way to do that is to try to take your future information group it into the likely results and get some categories as to what would it look like if you had a, a low outcome, an average outcome, a high outcome, or a very high outcome. Now note you might use more categories or you might use less categories than this, right? You, you're trying to group this into an information, a, a set of numbers that you could basically uh, get get an average from. And then we need to predict what our unit sales would be, which would be based on possibly prior information, prior advertising campaigns to see what the low outcome would generally be, the average, the high, and the very high, so that we can get the 700, the 800, the 1,000, the 1,600. Then assign our probabilities, which once again might be based on prior data and then taking into consideration the current market and, and what we think is going to happen in the future. In this case, we're going to say 30, 30, 30, 10. And then we can calculate our expected value, and that's basically the value that we can then use possibly to figure the next step out of whatever we need this number for. If it's for budgeting, for example, we might need it then so that we can then calculate uh, the unit sales in our inventory and how much we're going to buy for inventory or possibly production and whatnot. So we're going to take the 700 and then multiply it times the 30%. That's going to give us the uh, 210 the 800 on the average times the 30%, the 240, the high of the 1000 at the 30%, the 300 and the 1600 at the 10% is 160. So 160. Notice, of course, that the sum of the percents have to add up to 100% because we are, in essence, taking an average, which we're going to call the expected value. So you can think about it as statistical terms, average, mean, in essence, or in this case, uh, the expected value. So that might be kind of where you stop in some kind of scenarios. You're trying to get that number once again to figure out your further budget or something like that into the future. Or you might be comparing different advertising campaigns and want to think about the variance from basically the mean. So then we might want the population variance, the standard deviation, and the uh, coefficient of variation. So first, let's think about that by breaking this in, out into our number series again, like we did in the prior presentation, and then we'll go down here and, and do it in this format that it will generally be presented in with these types of problems that we have these weights that will be lined out. The, the idea of this first step is to line it up in a statistical kind of format that we would be used to when we just have a number set and then apply these calculations to do these calculations on, including the standard deviation and so on. So we're going to pick up our number series. So we're going to say that this 700 if we had 10 numbers let's just make a series of 10 numbers and weight them at 30 30 30 10. 10 numbers would be 700 700 700 then the 800 we have 30 percent so that would be 800 800 800 or three of them 1030 percent we're gonna have three of those and then the 10 percent at the 1006 that would be the one out of the 10 the 1006. Then we can calculate the mean or the average, and we'll do, be doing our comparison between the values and the mean. In essence, this calculation up top 
taking each of the values minus the mean or the average. Now we already calculated it here. That's basically the expected value. But let's calculate it the normal average way here. If we had our 10 numbers, it would be the 700 plus the 700 plus the 700 plus the 800 plus the 800 plus the 800 plus the 1000 plus the 1000 plus the 1000 plus the 16 divided by the number of numbers, the population, divided by 10 in this case, because there's 10 numbers there. There's our 910. Once again, that being the expected value, the mean, uh, the mean or the average, you can, you can see it as. So there it is all the way down. Then we'll take the difference. So we'll take the 700 minus the 910, negative 210, same here, same here. The 800 minus the 910 is the negative 110, same here, same here. 1000 minus the 910, 90, same here, same here. And then the 1600 minus the 910, or the 690. So now we're going to square it. We're basically at this point. Now we're going to square these items. So let's go ahead and square each one of them. I'll do one of them just for the fun of it with the trusty calculator. Trusty calculator, square in this thing. We're taking the 210 negative squared. And that's the 44 1. So there we have that. If we take the 210 squared, the 44 1. Note the squaring, of course, removes the negative number and amplifies the result here. 44 1. And then the 110 negative squared is the 12 1. The 110, 12 1. And then uh, so on. The 90 squared, 8,100. 90, same thing, same thing. And then the 9. Uh, the 690 squared notice when you get to larger number of course the squaring has a significant impact the 476 uh, 100 so then if we add these up we're at the 669 000 000, we're going to divide that by the population which of course is n in our formula up top the population being the 10 numbers 10 numbers here so 10 on the population the 669 divided by 10 is the 66 9 that being the population variance so that gives us an idea of the variance, but it's in squared units. So what we would like to do oftentimes is take the standard deviation, which would be the square root of that. So we'll take the square root of that. So if I did that, we'd take the uh, 66900 square rooting it gives us about the 258.65, 258.65 on the square of the root. And then uh, that so that'll give us an idea of, of you know, the spread from the from the mean in, in units that uh, that are applicable here instead of the squared units. And then we if we had multiple ad campaigns, which we'll see in the future, we might want the coefficient of variation, which would be calculated by taking that number divided by the mean, the 910, the mean that we calculated up top, which was could be called the average, could be called the mean, could be called the expected value. And this number, the coefficient of variation, will be more useful to us when we do a comparison. We'll see that in the future. But that's a common calculation in these type of practice problems. So we want to get used to, to getting to it at this point. Now, you could do this in Excel as well. So you might see in Excel someone just listing out a set of numbers such as this. If you had our data set up top, the mean or the average, which is the, 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 the average of these numbers here which would be this formula average of the group of numbers that would be our data set that would give us once again the 910 the standard deviation would be the stdev.p note that there's a standard deviation for the population and one for a sample which are slightly different i won't get into the differences now if you want to take a look at it take a you know search around on your favorite browser there's a lot of information on that on youtube and whatnot and then we've got the variance so the variance being the var.p, once again, p versus s for us because we're taking the population rather than the sample and we're taking the same data range. So there's our 66.9 and then the coefficient of variation calculated the same way, which would simply be the standard deviation divided by the mean average or expected value. So then now let's calculate it the way it would normally be done here. Uh, and you'll see the similarities with the calculation we did up top. So if we take the, the 700 times 30%, we get the 210 again, the 800 times 30, the 240, the 1000 times the 30, the 300, and the 1600 times the 10 is the 160 for the expected value of the 910. Let's take that same information down here and put that seven, the, the 800, the 1000, the 1600, 
and then take a look at our expected value. This is our average, in essence, you'll re recall from the prior presentation, which we've calculated up here at the expected value of the 910. And if we compare all these to the expected value, taking the difference, you see a similarity with the step we did up top with this whole series of numbers. But this time down below, we're going to apply the probabilities at the end. So now we're going to say the difference, the 700 minus the 910 is negative 210, 800 minus the 910, negative 110, the 1000 minus the 910 is 90, and the 1600 minus the 910 is the, is the 690. Then we'll square them. Let's just do one of them for the fun of it again. We did this last time. We'll square it again. Let's do the square. This is going to be the uh, 210 negative, and then making this a little larger so I see the squaring thing squared 44 1 there we have that squaring the 110 would be the 12 1 squaring the 90 would be the 8001 and squaring the 690 would be the 476 1 then we'll apply our probabilities which once again are the 30 30 30 10 so 30 30 30 10 so we did this basically on the last step now the probabilities and we multiply those times the squared items so the 44, 1 times the 30% is 13, 230. The 12, 1 minus, times the 30%, the 3630. The 8, 1 times the 30%, 2430. And the 476, 1 times the 10%, 47610. Then we're going we're gonna to add those up. That'll give us our population variance of the 669, which matches what we got up top, the 669 population variance. Then we'll take the standard deviation, square root of it. So same point where we're at at this time so let's do that here i'll make a larger calculator so i can see the square root thingy mcdingy thingy dingy that's the 66.9 and then the square root thingy is the 258.65 and then we'll take the we'll take the total expected value which is like the the mean or the average to get the coefficient of variation, which once again will be more useful when we have multiple projects, which we'll take a look at in future presentations. But you want to get used to that calculation, how to get there, because it's often going to be applicable with these types of problems. Oftentimes, they might simply give you uh, the standard deviation, the expected value, make you calculate something like the coefficient of variation, and then do an analysis comparing multiple different things with that coefficient. So we'll get to some of that those types of problems in the future but for now you want to see where this fits in to the rest of this typical kind of statistical calculation and how you might do it in multiple ways how you might tie it into like a normal type of series of numbers so it all links together it all clicks and makes some sense and that way it'll stick in your memory hopefully uh, a bit longer